A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread and, after he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes again. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, what I am doing, you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter then said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. And so you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet, put his garments back on, and reclined at table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I've done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
In nomine Patris, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Brothers and sisters, welcome as we celebrate the Mass of the Lord's Supper. Now I want to say a few introductory comments about this video. You know, Jesus uh, knows of the social distancing we're now practicing in our country, this coronavirus. And so we have to do Masses through video. But let me, let me assure everybody here that Jesus is touching your heart with graces right now from this sacrifice, from this preaching, from the, the sacrifice at the altar. You're exercising your priesthood. Jesus' power can go through walls and can go through distances. Even if you're in New Jersey or New York City, you're getting graces by watching this, this live Mass. So do not doubt. And also tonight, after we come to the end of this liturgy, this Mass of the Lord's Supper, I will strip the altar, but, and then after all that's complete, there will be some live adoration of Jesus in our adoration chapel, only for until midnight. But you can participate in live adoration for a period of time tonight with us. So be aware of that as we celebrate this great liturgy tonight, the Mass of the Lord's Supper. And I do want to thank Bishop Mulvey for issuing today to all the priests a reflection on this feast day about, about the priesthood, in which, and I'll say a few words about that tonight. So as we gather tonight to celebrate the Mass of the Lord's Supper, let us realize that Jesus and the Apostles were gathered to celebrate the Passover meal according to Jewish custom in Jerusalem. This is one of those celebrations three times a year when all Jews had to go to Jerusalem and celebrate like the Passover. Jesus did as well. He was obedient to the laws of the Old Testament regarding the Passover. In fact, as a child, he went there often with his parent, with, mom, with his mom and, and foster father, Mary uh, and Joseph. So the apostles went to Jerusalem this year, uh, to this particular year, were called to celebrate the Passover. But it was to be Jesus' last Passover. And it was to establish a new Passover. The Passover recalled, as all of you remember from the Old Testament, that night that the angel of death passed over Egypt and entered every house where there was no lamb's blood on the doorpost outside, the angel of death would enter that house and kill the firstborn son in that home. Remember, this was the last plague that God inflicted on Egypt to convince Pharaoh to let the Jewish people go because they were all in slavery and God liberated the Jews through this, this tremendous act of the lamb's blood. The lamb was killed by each Jewish family, blood put on the doorpost outside, they would eat the lamb. This is a very good parallel for the Mass. And that's why I'm, I'm convinced John the Baptist said to Jesus, there's the lamb of God. <laughs> the real lamb of God. The specimen I'm wearing right now has the lamb, the lamb of God. So the lamb's blood in this Old Testament story saved the Jewish people. And, and they were to eat the lamb, and then the next day, God liberated the Jews and they left Egypt. Praise God. And uh, so tonight I'd like to speak about what this, what this Passover, new Passover is all about. It's about the priesthood of Jesus. And how that priesthood has two different kinds. Baptismal priesthood and ordained priesthood. Now, the Catechism of the Catholic Church states that, that the priesthood of the Old Covenant, that everything said about priesthood of the Old Covenant is prefigured and fulfilled in Jesus, the new high priest, the one mediator between God and man. Jesus is the priest, the new high priest. The Christian tradition considers Melchizedek a kind of prefigurement of the priest of the God Most High, a prefiguration of Christ's priesthood, the unique high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Holy, blameless, unstained, and by a single offering he has perfected for all time, the Catechism says, those who are sanctified, that is, by the unique sacrifice of his cross. So God our Father wanted to reconcile all of us to himself and so a sacrifice had to be made. By the Old Testament, they would offer lambs. 
You know, the day, of, the day of Atonement, the priest would enter the Holy of Holies where God, so to speak, sat, that no one can enter except the high priest, and he offered a lamb. One day of the year, the, the Day of Atonement, it's almost like Jesus fulfills that event. He is the lamb being offered now at the, at the Last Supper, the Passover meal, obtaining for all the world reconciliation with God our Father. So this sacrifice tonight we're celebrating. You know, Jesus made the apostles priests. He said, do this in memory of me. And we believe when he said that, he was automatically ordaining them to celebrate the liturgy, celebrate the Mass. Not only that, he washed their feet. Now, washing the feet is not going to be done tonight because of the suspension of various aspects of the liturgy that the bishop has asked us for, for the good of, of health and safety not to do, so we're not going to do the washing of the feet tonight. But the washing of the feet done by Jesus does profess a theology of service, absolutely. But also, Theology of priesthood. Did you know that before priests could enter into the Holy Holies in the temple area, they had to wash their feet? Before the priest could offer the sacrifice on the Day of Atonement, he had to wash his feet in a special, uh, in a special uh, lab or a special kind of uh, instrument for holding water there near the temple gates. And so Jesus is also washing the feet of these apostles because now they're becoming new priests. And the Holy of Holies is now Jesus. <laughs> He's the Holy of Holies now. And so think about that. I want to mention that. Now I want to talk about that's ordained priesthood, which tonight Jesus gave to the church. Uh, none of us priests are worthy to be priests, but Jesus calls us. He calls bishops. He calls priests, he calls deacons to serve him. This is not something that we choose. I was called by the Lord. It's not like a vocation I choose. I was called by the Lord, and I'm convinced every priest can say the same thing. So that's the ordained priesthood. But let me speak tonight about the baptismal priesthood as well, because this is a priesthood that affects all of you on a day-to-day -day basis. What is this priesthood? It comes from Jesus. Yes, all baptized Christians share in the priesthood of Jesus Christ. We call it the common priesthood of the faithful. What does that mean? What does that mean? Christ, we know, is the only mediator between God and man. He's made his church a kingdom of priests for God our Father, both ordained priests and common, the baptismal priesthood. As I mentioned, the whole community of believers is a priestly people. We proclaim that in one of our beautiful songs. While being ordered to one another, we need each other. They differ essentially. The Lumen Gentium from Vatican Council II says in Article Number 10. In what sense do they differ? The common priesthood of the faithful is exercised by unfolding a baptismal grace. You get grace in baptism, and as you live your life day to day, doing God's will, keeping His commandments, uh, living according to the Spirit, you are exercising your priesthood. St. Paul says daily we offer God worship. Daily. By living according to the Spirit of Jesus. The ministerial priesthood that I share in is, is of service to the common priesthood. We celebrate sacraments to feed the people of God. So they receive grace. We preach the Word of God to enlighten them on their journey. We encourage them when they get sick, we anoint them. When they sin and they fall away from God, we hear their confession. You know, when they get married, we bring Jesus into that marriage and make it holy. All these things we do as, as ordained priesthood, but I want to give you an example of the baptismal priesthood for dads. This is an example. You know, through the sacraments, we're made members of the common priesthood, but when fathers follow the constant teaching of the church, keeping the Ten Commandments in their day-to-day -day lives, keeping the moral teachings of the church, yes, that's part of priesthood, and learning about their Catholic faith each day, teaching their Catholic faith to their children, when they show their children how to pray and set an example of prayer for them, when they help form the character of their children by loving discipline according to the teachings of Jesus, when they work for the support of their family, love their wives, being a loving support 
to their wives and family by spending time with children, carrying out chores around home, holding down a job. And by the way, we're going to pray this evening for all those who have lost their jobs. I know this coronavirus has affected a lot of men and women. We're going to ask God to bring help to this, uh, to this uh, tragedy, that things will happen so people can get jobs again. And these fathers, by volunteering to involve themselves in the parish and the faith community and are the community at large in various services, that's baptismal priesthood. Coming to Mass every Sunday, or by video now, and offering all of that to God our Father is exercising their baptismal priesthood. And they offer in union with Jesus to God the Father. It's Jesus who is the priest. All of us, all of us, offer our sacrifice to God our Father through Jesus the High Priest. And I am also called to exercise Jesus' priesthood in a very special way, and persona Christi. It's almost like Jesus is in the priest, <clears throat> making bread and wine into body and blood, forgiving sins, and all those wonderful things I mentioned a while ago. That's dads, but moms, you're in the picture too. <laughs> Your common priesthood is amazing as well. Keeping those Ten Commandments, following the, the moral teachings of the church, learning more about the faith each day, reading scriptures, catechism, etc., teaching faith to your children, teaching their children how to pray the basic Catholic prayers, including the rosary, forming the character of your children according to the teachings of Jesus, teaching them about love and service, also carrying out the duties of home life, cooking meals, taking kids to school, volunteering to help the parish and community at various services. All of these are activities of the common priesthood. And you offer that to God. In fact, when you come to Mass on Sunday, that's what you're bringing. That's what you're bringing, moms. This amazing God who loves us, accepts all of our lives, our sacrifices, our works, joys, and sufferings through Jesus, His Son. Children as well exercise baptismal priesthood. As they learn the Catholic faith, adapted to their age, as they pray daily, as they accept guidance and direct correction from their mom and dad, and others who are concerned about their moral and spiritual growth, as they go to school or attend school uh, on media, as they help out with home chairs, home, home chores, do homework assignments, keep their rooms clean, helping people in the parish or community, all of these are ways of our children exercising their common priesthood. All offered to God the Father through Jesus, the High Priest. Isn't that amazing? Our lives are full of meaning. Yes, I've been myself kind of like, like you, <laughs> quote, locked up in the home. <laughs> but it's not been boring for me. I've been using every moment I have to do useful things. Reading scripture, classics, getting on the internet, and sending out messages, <laughs> doing Zoom conferences. I'm, there's not a dull moment for me, I guarantee you. And hopefully not for you either. There's things we can do at home. Let's use this time as a way of getting closer to each other, closer to God. That's what I say. So as I bring this sermon to conclusion, let's be all grateful tonight for the priesthood of Jesus Christ, ordained and baptismal. We all are in the priesthood of Jesus. Let's help each other get to heaven. I will proclaim to you the truth, I promise it, according to the teaching of the church. I will not preach myself, I will preach Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I, I conclude with this. Let's show Jesus that we love him that we all love him by keeping his commands and witnessing to his love and truth as we exercise our priesthood, common baptismal priesthood, ordained priesthood, every day in living out our lives. Amen? Amen. Amen. our custom for every Mass, every major Mass, 
uh, we now offer to God the prayer of the faith. For the church, that she will remain faithful to Christ's sacrificial self-giving, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That on this night in which the Lord establishes the priesthood, all priests will recommit themselves to holiness with renewed zeal, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers that the power of the Holy Eucharist will transform the hearts of all people so that they will recognize Christ as the source and summit of their life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That the Lord will protect and guide our president, our governor, all government officials, our health care providers and first responders, to those who are suffering or died from the coronavirus, those who are isolated and alone, those who have become unemployed, and for small businesses who are struggling to pay their employees, and for the military, that the those that the Lord will bring an end to the coronavirus affecting the entire world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That the event of Christ's passion will generate lasting peace in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all those who have left the practice of the faith, that in this sacred time they receive the grace to be reconciled to the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers that all those who suffer will find consolation and blessing in their conformity to Christ crucified. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That the Lord will bless our parish, our school, works of mercy, religious education and formation for our teens and children, our RCIA program, BSA, and all parish programs and ministries. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That the Lord will bless those who celebrate birthdays today, including those listed in our bulletin, and for all in our prayer list, and for those who have asked us to pray for them, and for the intentions that we now present to the Father in the silence of our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, as we gather this evening to celebrate the Mass of the Lord's Supper, the Mass established by your Son to give you glory and praise for the whole world, grant us the graces we need to always reverence the presence of your Son, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Mass, and to be strengthened by this great sacrament in our journey of faith on earth. Grant all these things we ask, but we ask them all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And as we continue with our liturgy tonight, this is the time we normally will take a collection. I just remind everyone that uh, uh, during this coronavirus, we're all at home doing, following the norms of social distancing, which is good, we've got to do that. But I invite you to consider sending your alms and your offerings to the church via our online giving on the St. Elizabeth webpage or by mail or by dropping it off in the Adoration Chapel. First, all the parish mailbox. Just a reminder of keeping our church going. And for, I want to thank all those who have done so. Thank you very much for bringing your offerings. It's keeping our parish alive and well as we continue to serve Jesus. And now we'll continue with the Mass with the offertory song.
Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, with Andrew, James and John, Thomas, James and Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and David and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace. Command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer for our salvation and for the salvation of all, that is today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which should be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. 
including Virginia Montgomery and those deceased loved ones we now commend to the mercy of God in the silence of our hearts. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all those who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist and Stephen, with Matthias and Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus and Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, Elizabeth of Hungary, our patron saint, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, you bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
those unable to receive the sacrament of communion sacramentally, we offer the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. I'd like to offer now the special prayer to the Sacred Heart of Jesus and thanksgiving for all the graces he's given all of you by video tonight by being part of this live Mass. This is the prayer to the Sacred Heart of Jesus who is our Lord and King. O oh, most sweet Jesus, humbly kneeling at thy feet, we dedicate our family to thy divine heart. Be thou our King forever. 
In thee we have full and entire confidence. May that spirit penetrate our thoughts, our desires, our words, and our works. Bless our undertakings, share in our joys, in our trials, and in our labors. Grant us to know thee better, to love thee more, to serve thee without faltering. By the Immaculate Heart of Mary, Queen of Peace, set up thy kingdom in our country, reign in our homes, and enter intimately into the midst of our families, and make them thine own through our fervent love of thy sacred heart, so that soon one cry may resound from home to home. May the triumphant heart of Jesus be everywhere loved, blessed, and glorified forever. Honor and glory to the sacred heart of Jesus and Mary, the sacred heart of Jesus, protect our families. Amen. Let us pray. Grant Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. As we come to the end of this Mass of the Lord's Supper, I want to make a couple of announcements. Please remember this is the Holy Triduum. I invite you to join us tomorrow at 3 o'clock for our live video of the Good Friday service with veneration of the cross. And I invite you tomorrow evening live at 6 p.m. for the Stations of the Cross as we relive those stations Jesus underwent to redeem us and participate in them. Because let's not forget, Jesus lives in us. He suffers in us today. He's carrying the cross today in us. This coronavirus is a cross. We ask God to remove it, but we bear it with faith and love. Now also, at the end of this Mass, uh, uh, there's going to be, I'm going to exit and then start stripping the altar, reminding us of what happened that Thursday night at the, at, as Jesus and the Apostles left the, the cynical room, the Last Supper room, and walked over to Gethsemane, singing songs and getting ready to pray. This was a night of prayer for Jesus. It should also be an evening of prayer for us. So after the Mass ends, we're going to see some of these stripping, and then you're going to also be seeing, after this end of this video, another live video of adoration in the uh, Adoration Chapel before Jesus. This is permitted until midnight, but we're going to be showing some live video for a period of time. I'm not sure how long. But I just want to mention that it's our opportunity to be with Jesus that night. He was in prayer with the apostles. They were falling asleep. They were nodding off. But maybe tonight you and I can be with Jesus and, and comfort him. Tell him how much we love him. He died for us. And how many people today live their lives oblivious to Jesus? It's a sad reality that we need to make up for by our love for Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. So as we... As I now leave the altar and we end the Mass with a song, please be aware that this is very special and tomorrow we celebrate the Good Friday service.